According to a survey, Americans spent $729.1 billion on Christmas over the course of the 2019 holiday season. This is one of the reasons why I love selling seasonal Christmas decor. Demand is built in. Demand is a given. But how do we get some of that money coming our way so we can pay off our CNC machine? Right? Like, send it my way. But we do that by creating a unique product that gets people's attention. And today, we're gonna do just that. Not only are we going to make this project together, I'm also gonna show you how and who to sell it to. Complete breakdown. Of course, if you just wanna make this for fun, for a gift for a loved one, that's completely possible as well with the free files that will be available at the end of the video. First, let's talk about the design. I'm making this project in Vectric, which is my CAD CAM software of choice, and they happen to be the sponsor of this video. And I'm making this project as part of Vectric's holiday makeoff. To start, I pulled in two different Santa graphics that I liked and combined them together. This is a pretty cool technique that I got from my friends over at Vectric. This is one way to create something really unique, to get a unique vector that isn't already out there. So we do this by using the draw line tool or draw poly line tool. I started tracing the outline of the features that I wanted. These lines don't have to be perfect because I will be adjusting them here in a minute. So I'm literally just clicking around the outside, the outline of the graphic here. But just keep in mind, you wanna create as few nodes as possible. It just keeps everything clean and easier to manage later on. To close the shape, once you get all the way around, just hit tab and it automatically finishes that last uh, node for you and closes it off. Now that we have our general vector shape, I hit the hotkey N, which brings up all the nodes. Then I selected all these nodes and then I hit the hotkey S, which is smooth and it's like magic. Look, it's like you hit S and it just boom, smooths it. The next, I just need to do a little fine tuning to get these vectors the shape, the exact shape I want. Uh, so I just go in and grab these ha little handlebars here and drag and pull until the vectors are the shape that I want. Using the same exact steps, I did this for all the features that I wanted to create this complete vector of Santa. Pretty cool, huh? Next, it's time to set up the toolpaths. First, we're gonna set up a pocketing toolpath. We're gonna use both a quarter inch bit and an eighth inch bit in the same pocketing toolpath. The quarter inch bit will go first go around and clear out all the material it can and all the places it can fit. Then we'll be prompted a tool change and we'll switch out for an eighth inch bit. Uh, it'll come back and get into those finer, tighter areas where the quarter inch bit can't. I set this toolpath up to go to a depth of three eighths of an inch or 0.375 inches. Next, I set up a profile toolpath to cut the outer shape of Santa, the outer profile, all the way through the stock. This went to a depth, a total depth of three quarters of an inch. More on that here in a second. I learned an interesting tip recently. Did you know that you can put the letter Z in the total depth box when setting up a toolpath? And it will reference your material setup where you specified your material thickness. Isn't that cool? But that's not all. You can put something like Z plus uh, an amount. So Z plus 0.03, and it will automatically calculate the total depth it needs to go. Maybe you already knew that, maybe you didn't, but I thought it was a pretty slick trick and it just saves some math, right? Okay, the only thing to do on this part of the design is to add the light holes. I created quarter inch holes and copied and pasted them and arranged them just in an organic look. No real science to this. Okay, now to the second part of the design. This project is made using two layers of pine that I got from the home improvement store. So one is the top layer and one is the bottom layer. So this will create an overall thickness of the inch and a half I was going for. This will enable Santa to stand on his own. So you don't have to hang it, you don't have to lean it. It can just stand on its own as a piece of decor. All right, so back to the file. The one we already created was the front. It's on sheet one. We'll create the back on sheet two. The only thing we need on sheet two, which is the bottom, is an outline of Santa and the light holes. To do this, I selected all the light holes and the outline of Santa. In order to select multiple vectors, if you didn't know, uh, you just need to hold shift and then keep clicking and uh, select. Then you right click and select copy to new sheet or copy to sheet two. 
Depends if you've already created the sheet or not. This will ensure everything lines up exactly. Everything stays the same size, the same alignment. Then I can set up tool paths for this layer. Next, I headed over to the machine to start cutting. I decided to cut sheet two first. This was really simple and fast, around two minutes. I ran into one small problem though. I didn't cut deep enough. I assumed my stock was <laughs> three quarters of an inch, 0.75, but it was a little thicker. This is a friendly reminder to never assume the thickness of your material. This bites me all the time. I, I just, I don't know. This is where I went back and I added the 0 0.03 to my Z like I described earlier. But to cheat this particular situation, I didn't want to go back into the file before I cut it. I just manually zeroed out my Z a little bit deeper at the machine and then, then I reran the file. I don't recommend this unless you have a really good grasp on how your machine works, but it's a good hack to save a little time on simple tool paths in this particular situation. So here it is. I am really happy with it. Obviously, anytime you do a project, I'm constantly thinking about how I can make it better, but I'm really, really happy with how this came out. If you wanna make one for yourself to sell or to give away as a Christmas gift or whatever, the files are available for free in the video description. If you don't have Vectric, you're not a Vectric user, you totally should download the free trial as well. Uh, I'll have a link down below where you can do that. I also have all the links to all the materials and tools I used in the same place down below. So we have some things to talk about here though. Cost breakdown. So something to keep in mind is prices vary by area, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I paid. Maybe different, but this is what I paid. So for the pine wood uh, glued up panel, already sanded, I paid $15 for the whole thing. So $15, LED lights, a two pack for $12. So $6 into each one. I already had these particular LED lights for another pro uh, product that we have, and I had to cut these down. Um, so I probably could get those cheaper. So let's throw in a couple of bucks for sandpaper, glue, paint, et cetera. So then let's talk about time. This is why I really like this one. Uh, this machined in 10 minutes, no joke, 10 minutes. If you even went slower, 20 minutes, like totally possible on any, pretty much any CNC out there. Uh, so to create something that looks this sophisticated and unique, it only took me an hour total after I had it designed in the software. And you don't have to spend the time designing the software, designing in the software, because I already did it for you. So it literally take you longer to collect the supplies to make this than it will to actually make this project. So let's go through these numbers. Uh, we have $23 into material cost. Hard cost, $23. And have an hour worth of labor into this. Let's say, just for just for this example, $20 per hour. That's $43 of hard cost into this product. Multiply that by 1.5 to cover unforeseen expenses and our profits. And we come up with a sale price, a minimum sale price of 
That is the minimum we can sell this for and make a profit. So now that we know that, that is our point of reference, what does the market say we can sell this for? Remember, something is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So after doing a little research, I found a couple comparable items, similar items, to this going for $150 plus online. That seems a little high to me, but maybe not. Again, it's not up to me. It's going to depend on your particular market, but I believe you should be able to get, anybody should be able to get $100 or more for this item online or in person. So let's carry this out a little further. Hypothetically, let's say we split the difference and say we sold them for $125. Our minimum price was $64.50. This is the exact, think about that. This is the exact reason why you should not rely on a formula alone. Formulas do not take what someone is willing to pay into account. If you sold the item for $64.50, you would be leaving $60 on the table. But check this out. If we take our hard cost of $43, just materials and labor, then we stand to make a profit of $82 per sale a little bit for unforeseen things, but $82 per sale. By coming up with something that is unique and eye-catching, the sky's the limit of what you can earn on your CNC. All right, so hypothetically, I love hypotheticals. Let's say you bought a CNC for $4,000, all in $4,000. How many of these alone would you have to sell to pay it off? Well, 4,000 divided by 82, which is our profit, equals 49. So again, these numbers may fluctuate a little bit, but we're gonna go with this example. And with these numbers, you only have to make and sell 49 of these to pay for a $4,000 CNC setup. That is absolutely amazing. Let's say, even give or take a little bit, that's absolutely amazing. And it's possible. You may be wondering, Andy, where am I gonna find these 49 people? Well, I've got some ideas here, hang tight. I would start by posting it to your Facebook page, personal Facebook page, to gauge interest. Tell people what you're doing. Then I would have your significant other take one to work and show it off. Then I would have my friends show all their significant others. If I didn't sell 49 of them yet, then I would find the most extroverted person I know and give them one and say, here, this is yours. And in return, I want you to shout from the mountaintops uh, that they're available and that, that they're for sale. Next, I would find the busiest place in town walk in and ask the owners if I could give them one and return, all they have to do is just display it in a prominent place. And I'd put my business card with my phone number or email on the back. If I still didn't sell 49 at this point, I would do everything I just shared three more times. At this point, I'm willing to bet you sold more than 49, but if you haven't, then I would post them on Etsy, all while doing everything I just sh shared continuously until I paid off my machine. Now, I hope that that draws a roadmap for you of how you can come up with a product, a unique product like this. Take this one and, and go and pay off your CNC machine. I really wanna see that happen. Just remember, value is perceived differently by everyone. So if this seems expensive to you, it may not to someone else. If you wanna learn more about pricing, the ins and outs of pricing, then I put together this video right here. Click right here to learn the five biggest mistakes beginners make when pricing their products. Click right there and I will see you in that video. Thanks for watching, bye.